The discussion today is we've talked about chipping in the past, we've talked about the, the smart shot uh, from around the green. Obviously that would have to be the smartest shot you can play, the one where the highest percentage of success typically is, especially for a middle to higher handicapper, is your putter. The reason your putter is the smart shot for most people is because it's very simple. There's only one variable with a putter just roll. The minute we start to put this ball in the air, as we've discussed in the past, problems start to develop. And what I'd like to do, devote today's lesson, not on which would be the highest percentage shot, but how to play this shot to get the ball in the air. Because I see this problem a lot with golfers. The biggest issue they have is trying to help the ball get in the air. And that is the reason why they struggle is because they're actually trying to help the ball get in the air. This golf club, which manufacturers spend a lot of time and money on, is well suited for the task. It has an angle of loft on it. The angle of loft is what puts backspin on the ball, and the backspin is what creates lift, and that's what gets the ball in the air. If you look at a golf ball, you notice there's dimples all over it. They're not there just to make it look cute. Those dimples, when this ball spins backwards, creates lift. That's what gets the ball in the air. If you try to lift this ball in the air by scooping it in some way, 99% of the time what you're going to do is you're going to blade it and it's going to run right across the green. And your best friend, your best friend will tell you you looked up. You didn't look up. What you did was you pushed the club and it bottomed out before it ever got to the ball, came up, hit the center or the top of the ball with the leading edge. That leading edge ended up putting overspin on the ball or very little backspin because there's no angle of loft on that edge. The only way you get backspin is the club has to make contact with the ball on the part of the club that has an angle on it, not this leading edge down here at the bottom. So. How do you do this? Well, the first thing you have to appreciate about this is every time you hit a golf ball, if you can do this, it will go in the air if you do it properly. The second part about this is this club has to be led through the ball because when you push it, you make it come up too soon, which means then that an angle has to form as you come into the ball. How does all this happen? Quite simply, if you appreciate the fact that your hands and wrists are like hinges. I love to use the analogy that it's like a door hinge. If I held the door hinge on the bottom part of the hinge with my thumb and first finger of each hand, and if I flip it this way, the top part of the hinge will flip over. There's no muscles on this hinge. It follows momentum. If I flip it this way, the top part flips back over the other way. Once again, the momentum is what makes the hinge hinge or, as you'll see in a second, unhinge. Now, how does this apply to your golf swing? Well, we like to think of your lead arm as being the focal point of your whole swing because it has to lead this club to and through the ball. Here's why. Your hands and wrists are like that door hinge. When I swing my arm and hand back, with the club at the same speed, it looks like a straight line. I'm not holding this club tight, but the minute I stop my arm flow, look what happens to my hand and wrist. It hinges. Now, when I come back the other direction, if I stop my arm flow, it unhinges. This unhinging is where the problems happen. The hinging has its own set of issues, but that's not what causes your big problem. It's the downswing. The downswing, when you stop your arm flow, it unhinges. If it unhinges before you were able to lead the club head to the ball, going to be a problem. The problem is the club is going to bottom out in midair back here, and then it's going to be coming up by the time it gets to the ball. Because the minute it comes up, now it's going to be too high on the ball, and you're going to hit it with the bottom edge of the club. Now you're going to apply overspin on the ball, 
When the ball has overspin, guess what it does? It rolls along the ground. If it has backspin, it can create lift then because of those dimples. Now, how do you do this where you can effectively create the backspin? Well, what has to happen is your left arm and hand has to lead constantly through because the minute you stop the flow of your left arm, your hands and wrists are going to unhinge and you're going to have a problem. So constant flow with your lead arm and hand is critical so that the hinge stays hinged. Remember, you're not trying to do anything specifically with your hands. You're letting them react on this shot. You're not trying to cock them and then uncock them for sure because when you uncock them too soon, they're going to bottom out, come up and blade the ball. So if I swing my arm back, I stop my arm flow, you can see the club bottomed out way too soon, came up over top of the ball. That's what happens when you don't hit the shot well. Or I can bottom out too soon and hit the top of the ball. Or in some cases I can bottom out too soon and just blade it. All the same problem. The problem is if you look at my arm, I stop my arm flow, my hand and wrist, still had momentum with the club head, so what did it do? It unhinged. A goal for you when you hit these shots is to not feel like you're going to do anything with your hands. That's a goal. And when you lead the club through, you're not going to try to hit with your hands. You're going to keep them soft and allow them to react. Because they're hinges, they will hinge if they're soft. If you get too tight in your hands, you'll prevent the hinging and you'll feel almost uh, like you have to. You'll be compelled to push the club at the ball, which is the other problem because it creates the same issue. When I push this club from here, it goes faster than my lead arm. So look what it just did. It went by my arm again. It has the same effect as though I stopped my arm. When this club gets by my lead arm, I'm in trouble because it bottoms out too soon, comes up. Now, if you're really good and have an unbelievable sensitivity and awareness, you can actually flip this club and still pop that ball up in the air and think you got away with something. But here's when it doesn't work, usually when you need it or when the lie gets really tight because even though it's on the grass, there's still a little cushion under that ball that if you hit behind it and it comes up, you can still make some contact and still get the ball to go in the air. But if that ball is sitting on bare ground, a very tight lie, that's when you're going to usually pay the price if you try that shot. You'd have to hit it absolutely perfect. 